My name's Derek Cousins. The company name is Flow Signals. I'm looking for £50,000 for 10% of the equity. This is a no-entry sign. Now, everybody knows what they mean, but some people manage to miss them. Now, that's no big deal if it's just the slip road to the shops. But when it's the slip road to the M4, the M5 or the M8, it's a whole different scenario. Look at them face on and they're fine. But there are actually very few junctions where you will see them face on. You see the side on view, which can be extremely limiting. So, we fit a flow signal. It's red in colour. It's mimicking the traffic that is coming towards you. It's visible for 180 degrees. It's visible in heavy rain and fog. Turn away and you'll see this in your peripheral vision. You see, this is a 1931 no entry sign and this is a 2010 no entry signal and it's much safer. This is a one way street sign, but what do you see if you go the wrong way? You see nothing. So we fit a flow signal. This time it's angled towards the traffic that's going the wrong way down the road. It's saying to them, here John, you are going the wrong way. You're going, you're going through a strange town. You've never been there before. You're coming to the traffic lights. Turn right. You have to turn right. The one thing you need to know is, is there oncoming traffic? Do I have to give way? But what tells you there's oncoming traffic? Nothing. So we fit a flow signal. Oops. It's gone the way of all demos. So we fit a flow signal. It's amber in colour. It's telling you there is traffic coming into the junction from this direction. Any time that the traffic lights, these traffic lights, are anything other than red, solid red, you will see this burning and turning. You see, once this is fitted, you will not turn right in front of that learner driver who's just found the, the gear. You will not turn right in front of young Susie who's been busy doing her makeup because someone will toot behind her and she'll fly forward straight into you. And you'll wait for that car in the distance because he will be on top of you before you've finished your turn. Thank you for listening. I'm looking for your support to get this project off the ground. There are other applications for these signals as well. An ambitious proposal from Hertfordshire inventor Derek Cousins. He wants to revolutionise the nation's existing traffic signs and signals. But to do it, needs a £50,000 investment from the Dragons. Peter Jones just looks bewildered. I don't even know, I'll be perfectly honest, I'm not even sure I know what it is. But what I do see is a flow flashing light right. on a sign. Yeah. Has it cost you a lot of money to do? Um, about £24,000 so far, yeah. £24,000? Yeah. Are you, you are serious about this? Yes, go on. What's, what yeah. a flashing light on a, on a pole? Yeah. Yes, I'm serious about this. But wouldn't... <laughs> Can I please... It's not often I say yeah, this. Could one of the other dragons please interrupt me? Oh, um, hello, Derek. <laughs> hello, it's Deborah. <laughs> Derek, um, have you had this approved? No. But something needs to be done because... So, at the moment, you have absolutely no idea because you know there's very strict regulation. Oh, yes, I know that. But you haven't done anything at all about oh, that? Oh, no, I've, I've, the, the lady who runs the signs and signals doesn't like the idea. So. She doesn't like the idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. All right, well, another dragon, <laughs> please interrupt me. Not a great start for the inventor. Perhaps Theopophetus can bring some order to proceedings. Uh, Derek, yeah, I'm going to give you £50,000. Yeah. How am I going to make a profit from it? Well, because we'll be selling these, these signs worldwide. And no-one else will be able to do these? Yeah, I've got a pattern on it. What have you got a pattern for? Because it's a, a, a good idea. No, 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 they, no. What have you got a pattern for? For, for what? For oh. using a display, which display... You see, it's mimicking the traffic that's coming towards you. It's red, it's highly visible, you'll see it in your peripheral vision, so when you're coming along, instead of missing the no-entry signs, which are up too high, which you can't see at the right angle, you will see this in your eye. What is it that you've got a pattern on? If you can it's, you tell it's me? On, it's on these signs and their, their, their deployment for, for road safety applications. It's to do with mimicking traffic coming yep. towards you. Derek, listen. Yeah. Answer this question truthfully. You can't really think you can get a pattern for flashing lights to stick on poles and make a fortune. Yes, I do. 
Derek's steadfast belief in his product may be admirable, but that's not enough for Peter Jones. One thing that worries me, you spent £24,000. Yes. I need you, on all seriousness, this needs to be your wake-up moment. This will save lives. This will not save it lives will. at all. It and in fact, it could even be a major distraction if we're going to get serious. These signs have been in existence for a long time. They've been in the, the highway the code 19, has been in existence for a long time. Yeah. We all know it. We all get it. Do not spend one more pound trying to push this into the marketplace. This is ridiculous. And for that reason, I'm out. Okay, fine. Derek, can I ask you, has anybody told you they think this is a good idea? Any chief constables? Any, any, anybody no, who can actually possibly have any influence at all no. on them ever, ever, ever being used or sold? Well, can I explain a can, little bit Yes or no? Sorry. Just give me some names. No, no, I haven't got any names to give you. So the answer is nobody? The answer's nobody. So we, you stand in front of us with the person who's going to make a decision on whether or not they're introduced, telling you categorically, this is not going to happen, I do not like it and I sit here smiling and then I get serious. I have never met you in my life before. I am pleading with you not to do it. Won't affect my life at all, but it is going to affect your life. Well, can I, can I finish telling you about the, the no. traffic light incident? No, no, you okay. can't. Well, you can then, but you can't tell oh, me because okay. I'm not at all interested. Oh. I'm out. I, I'm struggling, Derek. I've been driving for 30 years and yeah. I've never not recognised the no entry sign. You know, are, well, you, are well, you trying to I solve... You, I know you haven't missed them, but people do miss them. Look in your highway code. There is no wrong way sign in the UK. I'm just going to let you hear... I'm out. I'm out. A remarkably composed Derek sees three dragons walk away from the deal. And Theo Pafitis is now ready to have his say. It isn't going to work. Give it up. No. Nope. Derek, yeah, okay. Well, I'm out. OK, well, would you listen to me, Duncan, for five minutes? I'll listen to you, Derek. Thank you. Right, there's another application which is, this also addresses, and one is that when you're in a car park and you're looking for the exit sign, the one thing, you, the one thing you've got is that your eyes, you look yeah. round, you're looking for that, that arrow sign. <laughs> and if you have it going red... So what happens is that when, when all the arrows are all covered in snow and you can't see any of the arrows or they, they've worn out or you can't see... You'll look down one way and you'll see the red going down the way and you'll see the, 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 the green and the blue the other way telling you that the green taking you towards the exit and the blue taking you towards mall parking. Derek, I said I'd listen to you because I wanted, didn't want to be impolite. Um, is there much more? Well, I, I, was, I haven't really finished explaining about the traffic light problem. You win the worst invention ever to be brought into Dragon's Den today. Really? Um, the prize is yours. And Derek, I'm out. Thank you. Going from the left-hand side, you look at the no-entry sides and see how easy it is for you to miss them. Derek, Derek, thank you. Thank that you. way. Derek, that way. Down there. There's a sign there, that way. It's a swift exit for Derek. Hello Dragons, my name is Patrick Thurkill. I'd like you to consider investing in our offshore company. The company is a primary protein production of mitosis edulis, the edible muscle. And what we'd like to do is place the long lines for the muscles out here in Spay Bay. Now just to give you an idea of where Spay Bay is, here's my crude illustration of the UK and uh, we're here between Inverness and Aberdeen in a particularly pristine area of the country. We're ringed by mountains, which makes it a very happy place because the warm air coming from the Atlantic rains an awful lot on the mountains. Some of the water drains into Spay Bay, and so it makes it a happy place for mussels to live, and they grow very large, and uh, they are already here. I'm not introducing anything. This is a natural process. All I'm doing with my partners is producing a habitat for them. The only industry we've got here is whiskey, agriculture, a bit of stalking of the good kind. Now, we'd like you to invest £100,000 for 20% of equity in this company. And for that money, what we'd like to build is a 
packing station on the harbour at Berghead. A retail sector there as well to send them by post from internet bookings. And also a boat to harvest these mussels. The target is a thousand tonnes a year, which is not extraordinary. I'll uh, take any questions. I think you, you've uh, seen how wonderful this opportunity is. It's a passionate, if slightly eccentric, pitch from Patrick Thurkel, who needs £100,000 to establish his new mussel farm on the east coast of Scotland. He's willing to give away 20% of the company, but Peter Jones has a more fundamental question. Patrick, I'm, I'm, I'm Peter. Hello. Hello, Peter. Um, I'm, I'm terrified to ask this, but, but what do you actually do for a day job? Well, I, I finished my day job. I was in the Royal Air Force for 32 years, and I've flown search and rescue for most of that in this area. So you're a helicopter pilot? I'm a navigator, please. Is that better? Uh, that's insulting, yes. Yeah. Is it? So a navigator's, navigator's better than a pilot? Navigator's a thinking man's air crew. So you're an intelligent oh, navigator? I wouldn't like to say so. And, and what do you do f now? You're retired? Well, this is it. Uh, I, I've decided from reading research that this is the place for muscle production. There's no reason why the West Coast and Shetland should be the only ones that so do So to get an idea, you currently now go out, put nets out... Yes. ..and wait for your muscles to get into your nets? Yes. And how many muscles have you managed to create and get? None. No, it only no. just started with this season. Did you speak to anybody about this business? As in, as in could it be turned into a business? Has anybody yes. else... Who did you speak to? Um, the, the, I've spoken to um, Scottish Selfish Association. I've worked on a mussel farm in Loch Fyne for a month and I've had no negative comments so far. Patrick's presentational skills aren't impressing the dragons and a bemused Peter Jones is struggling to assess the business opportunity. Will Duncan Bannatyne's Scottish roots make him more sympathetic? Who farms Loch Fyne? Loch Fyne Oyster Company. Do they also own the Loch Fyne restaurant chain? No, they don't. They don't own the restaurants, but they supply to them, which is a, a wonderful marketing strategy they have. Do you see yourself competing? No. You don't? Not, you don't, not, you no, don't. This, this is a different market. Well, why is it a different market? Well, the, the business plan we have is for selling on the internet in party packs like Come Dine With Me packets so that everything is produced. You're joking, we, aren't you? We worked out what come, the... Come Patrick, you're kidding. What the problem is with mussels is that people don't pick them up off the shelf because they don't really know what to do with them. And yet they're extremely nutritious, they're delicious. Oh, Patrick, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come <laughs> on. People don't pick mussels up off the shelf because they don't know what to do with them. So they're going to go on the internet and buy them off you. Because I don't sell know what to do with them. I've, I've got a, a global food producer in the local area that will take them and also produce the cooking sauce. So if I can get it all there, instructions, in the, the right quantities and that... So in you're going to sell mussels in the bag? Yes. They're very good. They, they close up hermetically sealed and they last for ages. The former RAF man is clearly passionate about his mussels, but he's failing to convince the multi-millionaire investors he has the required business now. Theo Pafitis wants to hear more about his company's financials. How much money have you put into this already? Not very much. The startup costs are remarkably low. The lease for Spay Bay is £40. Hold on, hold on, hold on. How can you say the startup costs are remarkably low and you come here trying to get £100,000 of my children's inheritance for 20 Was it? What did you offer me? 20%. 20%? And you say it's remarkably low? Yes. It, the, the ongoing costs are high. The startup cost are low. Zelda, so you want me to put all the money in, so I take all the risk, and you're going to give me oh, no, no, a no, fifth? No, no, you won't uh, take all the risk at all. No, no, I'll be mortgaging my house, I'll be putting money into this. Are you going to put the other 400,000 in, are you? Yes. And me and my uh, partners, Bill and George. And how's the price for fresh mussels varied over the past few years? Well, they went up 4% last year. The price in Tesco's for standard mussels is no, no, the whole three pound eighty. The wholesale price two pound twenty five a kilo. So if I'm making a thousand tons, that's essentially two point two five million a year. The revelation that Patrick might be in a position to capitalise on a growing and lucrative market has gone down well. Now Deborah Meaden wants more detail about how he plans to harvest that crop. Have you got a site for the um, processing factory? Yes, I do. 
do you have planning consent for it? Uh, no, but it was warehouses on an industrial warehouse and uh, the council would be delighted if it was processed and used as a harbour. So you've identified a site, yes. you haven't got planning consent, but no. you think that that won't be difficult. The lease arrangement. Yes. Um, what rights does that give you? To put out uh, muscle uh, lines in that area. And so how sustainable is it? Um, oh, in this is the most sustainable business of all. It's very eco-friendly. My partner, my business you didn't, partner... you didn't correctly guess my question. How many muscles can you pull out of that water without causing damage to the ecosystem? Hmm. Now, that's a very interesting question. Uh, I hope you know the answer, because saying something is sustainable mm. without knowing the answer to that sounds a little bit hollow and flaky. Well, uh, obviously, if I filled up the whole Murray first... It's a number. Mm, no, no, I can't tell you that number. So... A thousand tons is... That... Okay, okay, I'm sorry, we have got overfishing going on, which oh, is no, no, absolutely no. legal and allowed. So what number is sustainable to fish out of that bay? Well, I would say a thousand tons. What's that's your, what I've what's got. Your, what's your expertise that, tell, that well, means you can because, tell me that's sustainable? Because right. they do that in a vow, which is much smaller. The Murray so, Firth is so, open. Sorry, so somebody else does it over there, mm. makes it sustainable in this bay, does it? Yes, it's a problem. I want to know how much you can fish out of that bay to ensure that it doesn't damage the ecosystem. You can't tell me. A thousand tons. I don't want to do any more. Um, Patrick, I'm out. And it's... I'm out. Okay. It's been an angry exchange that has cost Patrick his first dragon. Now, James Kahn is ready to have his say. I take it this is your first um, attempt at business, will yes, you? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. I've been in the oh, Air Force for a long time. And you're going to put all of your life savings into something that you're presenting to a professional group of investors that a four-year-old could do. I mean, you have to take this more seriously. Okay. You know, my best advice to you would be take professional advice because I don't think you're going to make any money. Right. And for that reason, Patrick, I'm out. Okay. Patrick, I'll tell you what I am. Don't listen to James's advice. He said you should get some professional advice. That will cost you money. All you have to do is watch my lips. This is absolutely ludicrous. And I'm out. Two more dragons out, and Patrick is running out of options. Will Theo Pafitis throw him the financial lifeline he desperately needs? How old are you? 54. 54. Uh, you've always had a distinguished career in the RAF, and now you decided you're going to do something you love. Well, that, that's great. There's risks attached to this, uh, and I'm not sure I would want to bet the farm on it. No. I think if you want to do it, do it. But do it in a controlled way. Yes. Do it in a controlled way that if it does go wrong, you can look at yourself in the shaving mirror in the morning and say, I tried, it didn't work. Thank you. So as long as you can afford to fail... Yes. ...go for it. But unfortunately, yes. you're not going to be able to afford to fail my children's inheritance. Right. So for those reasons, yes. I'm out. Patrick, that just leaves me. Um, I couldn't agree more with Theo. I think that you know, there's some things you want to do in your life that you have to go and do. But unfortunately, you might be catching mussels in that net, but you're not going to catch this dragon this time. Right. Um, I'm going to have to say that I'm out, Patrick. Well, well, thank you all very much anyway. And I'll take your advice. Good luck. Good and Patrick, I will do good it. luck. Yes. Patrick may have split opinion amongst the rival dragons, but they were unanimous in deciding against investment. Thank you. There you go. Good morning. My name's John Foster Smith. It's two o'clock in the morning and I can't get a wink of sleep because my partner, Ros Adams, is taking up all of the bed. No, I'm not. You are. We think that at some point in their relationship, every couple will have this problem. But we've got a product that's going to solve this dispute.
is a ley line sheet. The ley line is the line that runs down the middle of the fitted sheet and it's not uncomfortable to sleep on, but you can feel it in the dark with your fingers. We're looking for £50,000 for 20% of the business. We're looking to develop licensing agreements with the major department stores and we're also looking to trial our own short run of production. Now, there's just one more question. Um, which of you would like to get into bed with us? Now, have you got any questions for us? Business partners Roz Adams and John Foster Smith's playful pitch for £50,000 has left the Dragons rather bemused and apparently unamused. Peter Jones is first to interrogate the couple. Hello. Hi. I'm Peter. Which one of you came up with the idea to put a dividing line between a sheet and a bed? This is my idea. Um, I'm frightened to ask, but I'm going to ask it. What do you do for a living? I'm a designer. Um, I've run a small graphic design company for nine years. Um, the idea, I would say, came to me uh, at three in the morning when my, my dear wife was taking up all of the bed. So the idea came to you when your wife crept across that halfway house? She does that. Most men would get excited by that, but <laughs> you didn't. I do, but um, you know that thing where you each get your hands and you're sitting in bed and you're going, you're taking up this much and you're taking up... The, and and uh, uh, Well, this is the, the answer to the question. Well, my problem is my wife doesn't cross the line enough. <laughs> <laughs> Can't uh, you invent something that makes her cross it more? I hope that this no, wouldn't can I stop just say any... That, just cause it, uh, my opening shot is I look at it and I think you're, you look pretty sane to me, but I think the product's ridiculous. I don't want to say it's ridiculous without trying it, so do you mind if I go up there with Theo Pafitis and try By all it? means, <laughs> by all means. Should we, uh Avert our eyes. Oh, is he? Really gonna get so the Peter idea. Jones and Theo Profitis have decided to test out the ley line. No, no. Spoons this way or what? <laughs> but it's clear that investment opportunities are not at the forefront of their minds. Do we have to take our clothes off? Well, the, to... If you like, um, but the line's not getting in, in your way. There's a mischievous mood in the den. You feel that? Feel that? Can you feel it? I can feel that. it for you? <laughs> But multi-millionaire James Kahn wants to get back to business. I think uh, we've seen enough. <laughs> OK, John, have you sold any of these? No. OK, so it's just an idea? Yes. Yeah. And just to make it really clear for me, the basic idea is it's a sheet with a line down the middle. Yes. It could stretch to a duvet cover as well. The patent covers any bed clothes, really. Are you trying to say that you've got a patent, an international race, to stop anybody else putting a line down the middle of the bed? But yes. Yes, you have? I've got a, a British patent. How much have you spent on that? Um, I think it's £135 for a year, for the first year. So you find a patent lawyer who'll get you a patent for that for £135? Well, it's not a completed patent, it's a patent that's been applied for and we need to do the search. Okay, uh, could I just tell you how far apart it is between a patent application for £135 yes. and a patent? Deborah Meaden is quick to expose John and Ross's business naivety but a perplexed Theo Pafitis still doesn't understand the ley line. Is this an alternative to contraception? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are we doing here? What we found is that um, there was some research done in 2006 in the States and they found that um, of the 50 couples they interviewed, it was one of the things that most of the couples did have was this territorial issue. So what we're trying to do is give the public a product that allows them an opportunity to resolve Ros, it without a row. Ros, they don't come much bigger than Mrs P, right? <laughs> and you know, nothing gives me greater pleasure than either she or I cuddle up to her. Mm. Uh, and so why would I want to avoid that? I think you're a lucky man. I think most uh, Most relationships couples... don't have that. Is Not that according saying? to the studies that we've read. Guys, I just really believe you need to draw the line here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and give up on it. I'm out. Thank, Thank you. you. The Dragons can't take this business seriously, and James Kahn just isn't buying it. Have you shown it to anybody that's placed an order? We've shown it to friends. Yes. Um, Always a great place to start. Yes. And yeah. they said it was amazing, I'm yeah. sure. They love it. Okay, c can I just tell you where I am, John? Mm. Um, 
what I would say to you is go and target all the obvious customers that you think would buy something like this. And I think if you get sufficient orders, that's a great way of saying, is this going to work or not? But I think to be coming to an investor to ask for money when you haven't really tested the product in a commercial environment doesn't show me a lot of entrepreneurial savvy. And I think for those reasons, I'm out. John Ross, I disagree with what James was said, but I wouldn't even bother wasting the time of talking to a retailer about this product. This is never going to be a business. So for that reason, I'm out. Thanks, Peter. Thank you. James Kahn and Peter Jones are the latest dragons to decline the opportunity of investing £50,000 into a novelty bedsheet. Deborah Meaden is dumbfounded. What amazes me is you're standing here and presenting this as a serious product. You're going to sell those at what? 17. Uh, we, we think that if um, a sheet was on the shelf um, and the same sheet was next to it, but it had the ley line, down the sheet, um, we think that would persuade no, somebody. No, but my point sheet, is, it will so never yeah. be on a shelf with a sheet. Uh, It'll end up as a joke on a website. Because I can tell you, as a joke product, you might have a bit of a market there, but this is not a commercial <laughs> opportunity. So I'm afraid I'm out. Thank you. Thank you. So, the other four dragons are out. You can oh, move in now. Clear the way you? for you, Doug. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they've missed the opportunity, haven't they? <laughs> it's a great opportunity, isn't it? We've uh, got a strong creative partnership. We've got other things on the, uh, on the boil. I've got a great portfolio. Oh. Um, and, uh, uh, and, uh, See, I was looking for things. you to say, yes, Duncan, they're all wrong. But I didn't get that enthusiasm because I don't think you really believe in this. I think that lots of people would buy this. I'd buy this. No, you know, I don't think you really do believe in it. Somewhere in the back of your brain, it really knows, the back end of your brain knows this is a silly idea and you should bring that forward and you should really... I accept that because it is a silly, silly idea. So for that reason, I'm out. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Two of the dragons may have accepted Ros and John's offer to get into bed with them, but in the end, none wanted to stump up the cash. The entrepreneurs are leaving the den empty-handed. <laughs>